Hey everyone, how are you doing? I want to thank you all for being here. Our next panel is Tess Mugs, and our moderator is Mr. Justin Lopes. He has been over, all over the US, all over the United States. He's a very seasoned grower, and I'm so happy to have him here moderating this panel. Thank you, Justin. Justin from Grassroots, got a couple of my friends with me here, Mike, Derek, and uh, Peter. Peter, sorry, <laughs> from Giffy. Uh, we'll get right into it. I guess we're going to talk about some precautions and steps yeah, to take it. before you set up your home. We've heard a lot about people oh, setting up grow rooms and how much stuff they put into their lights and how much stuff they put into their food. Um, we haven't really heard anybody talk about the precautions they take um, in pest control. So we're going to start with Mike and then we'll go down the line. And uh, I just want to hear about some of the precautions that you take um, before, during, um, you know, while in the festival. Thank you, Justin. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, this is a passion of mine. Obviously, it looks like it's a passion of yours as far as cannabis. Um, I have been a cultivator. I've been a caretaker, a uh, patient. Um, it's an amazing plant, as we all know. There are a lot of preventative methods, and you know we'll get into that. Um, but uh, do you want to introduce ourselves to more? Yeah, just go right down line. Let's start talking about the precautions that you take. You know. Yeah. So um, basically, when I set up a grow, um, you want to figure out where you are. Are you in a basement? Are you in an attic? Two totally different worlds. Okay. An attic is going to contain a lot more heat. Heat rises. The basement can be more muggy, more humid. So your ventilation is definitely key. Um, you know, I'm an instructor at Grassroots Institute, and you know, it was a real big change in my life to learn so much more than I have um, with experience, whether a mistake or I figured out something new. But I was able to rewrite classes and take knowledge that I learned from a seat like you guys are sitting in and take that and advance that knowledge online or wherever from a friend of a friend. Because when I started growing, there was no Facebook, there was no internet really, okay? Um, maybe I don't look like I'm that old, but I have I have a couple years under my belt. So, basically, so I'm gonna look at the area, the surroundings. Um, one of the key things is, you know, heat. So you have to vent it out, then you have to um, always have fans going. You have to have different layers of fans moving, you know, moving the air around so that things don't get stagnant. Cleanliness is key. No stagnant water, no dead leaves. You don't want, unless you're doing a TLO, uh, True Living Organics Grow, um, you don't want, you know, when you're in your tomato garden, you don't want to leave mulchy topsoil unless you're in an organic scenario because uh, that's going to create pests. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, if you bring it in indoor air, you got to make sure the temperature is right. If the temperature coming into your room is too low or too high, that's going to affect your plan as well. Um, you want to take a look? My name is Derek Carver. Uh, I've been growing for over 10 years. I, uh, I studied at UMass Amherst in soil sciences, so I have a real strong background in that. Uh, I've also done a few commercial grows, uh, one in California and one out here. Uh, so I, my big thing is uh, is cleanliness. Um, I think a, a happy grow room is a clean grow room. Uh, but most of your prevention is going to happen early on in veg. Uh, you don't want to be battling this stuff in bud because that's just a never-ending battle. You'll never win, I promise. Especially like spider mites, by the time you have a problem and you bring them in your bedroom, you're going to end up with webs like that. If you see, if you see webs, you're done. So uh, that's what I think. Um, the other thing is, uh, as far as cleaning, like in between runs, um, people tend to miss things, small things, like uh, your timers. Um, you won't clean those. Or uh, anything that's plugged into the wall, you know, or even like people will clean their fans, but not take their fans off the wall. So you're not cleaning behind your fans. Or if you have anything on your wall, like uh, uh, something for reflection, you always want to change that like every time. Like washing won't do anything because you've got behind that. So you really want to be as meticulous as possible. That's all I can really add. 
My name is Peter Armando. I work for Griffin Greenhouse Supply. Um, one of the primary things I do for the company is we write independent um, IPM programs for commercial growers. So what we actually do is use biochemistries and beneficial insects and combine them over the process of the program to keep the top crop clean. We work on spider mites, rips, aphids, root aphids, russet mites, and by using it as a preventative program, we can keep the crop clean. Now, one of the challenges in all this, and when we get here, is, is we are currently working on a crop that's federally illegal. And most of your chemistries, even if they're biological in state, carry an EPA number, so by rights you can't use them. It doesn't say cannabis on the label. So now we have the states have stepped over the line and kind of come out with their master list of chemistries and products that you can use on the cannabis industry. So it makes a unique scenario at the moment to sit down and write one of those buildings. So it's really on a state by state basis. And what I did today for you is, on the biological side, I don't want to overwhelm you and show you all the tools in the trade. So what we did was, I brought one of our handouts that I just put in the use in New York, and to show you one of the products we use, and I showed you nematodes, which are used very easily as a drench on a crop, from bat, fungus snack, contact bill, on thrips. So that handout that I handed you, Everything you need to know on the nematode is in that handout. You know, I don't see information. Okay? And I also, what I did is so that you guys could all see one, this is how a nematodes are actually shipped to you. They come in, these are live nematodes right here, 50,000 in this container. Okay? They're suspended animation once you warm them up in water. You put these down on the crop. These are going to go down in the ground. They're going to find the fungus now larva. And then they actually have to go physically inside of the larva mm -hmm. and reproduce in order to kill it. And what they do is they create an enzyme that mixes with their DNA and makes a toxin that kills you both from the inside out. So there's no way that you'll ever, you know, we all have different DNA. There's no way there's ever going to be a resistance. Any one of us in the room can take this tray right now and eat it. It's not going to hurt you, it's not going to harm you. So it's one of your best defenses in this industry. Okay. They're readily available. You could order them today and then ship to your door tomorrow. This tray way it's designed, it's got a date stamped on it. This can sit in your refrigerator for our, I believe the date on this box right now is January 1st, 2016. So the product in here stored at 40 degrees is good until 2016, January 1st. You've got six weeks of life in that pack. Two biggest enemies to these is they'll explode in UV light, so some light will kill them in your human touch. Because you, you, if you open this and touch it with your finger, you can create a static charge that will kill everything in the package. What? Exactly. But if you're having issues with fungi snacks, this is your best friend. They also will contact kill a grip. So if you have a plant covered in grips, you can dip it in these and fill it on the concrete. Okay. I'll, have, I'll pass these around so you guys can actually physically look. Yeah, one, uh, one tip on fungus gas. That's something that's uh, yeah, like going to come from the yeah. soil. Uh, it's one of the first uh, visual aids to know you have an issue inside your grow. Um, you know, they're probably one of the biggest sized, you know, pests you'll see. So they're just going to fly right out of your soil. There's many products uh, like uh, many bats, you cover your whole um, your whole container and they can't fly back in and reproduce and, and plant their eggs. So, um, But usually they're from overwatering, stagnant water in the corner, maybe you just finished cleaning and grow and you just left a nice little puddle. Well, that's where they're going to go. Um, you know, they're similar to fruit flies, you know, so they're kind of similar uh, characteristics. So you think in between waterings, they should be dry water a little bit? Yeah, you definitely don't want to overwater, and overwatering comes watering too much. Um, you want to have a few days. You know, the first two inches of soil, um, you want to kind of put your finger in and test it out. And if it's still wet, 
and you want to wait a little bit before you water again. Just to add to that, um, I mean, spider mites and thrips and all of these bugs, they thrive in high humidity. Uh, some people will try to just raise the humidity and see if that'll work. That's a bad idea, because you will get powder mold. So that's why there's such a very small window of humidity range, especially variation in, in veg and flower for that reason, because you don't want too much water and you don't want too little water as well. I was wondering if you guys could like, touch on about like, bringing pests into the garden, uh, you know, between friends or you know, like, gardens or in a place like this, you know, the type of things that can transmit into the garden. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we're, we're gardeners, we have our veggie garden, we're out on our knees, we're you know, playing with our kids outside, we're going on a hike, and then we come home, you know, after you know, getting high or whatever, we want to go straight to our growth because we haven't seen it in three hours. Don't do it. Change your clothes, change your shoes, put a little, uh, you know, um, container of salt water and step into it just for the bottom of your shoes, whatever you're tracking, but just completely change your shoes altogether. Um, you know, get something that doesn't contract, you know, our whole bugs. You know, my beard, Justin has a great beard. You know, he could have bugs in there, you know? People forget about hats, too. Hats are huge. Because you don't think about washing your hat, but if you go into your room and then the next day you go into your room after you sprayed or whatever, you're going to solve it for not. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, what it really comes down to, one of the biggest things i learned in grassroots is to know your seed. What does that mean? You need to know what you're growing. You need to know who you're growing for, okay? Because there's a sativa that's going to grow 12 feet tall. There's an indica that might grow four to six feet. You know, we've, we've uh, you know, we reiterate a lot of issues because it all comes down to the basics, the basic elements of air, water, nutrients, and, and all those key elements. So, um, you know, you just have to know your basics, basically. <laughs> what about taking clones from other people? That's a no-no, unless you really look at them under a microscope and then still dip them in something because you never know what they have. You don't know what's in their soil even. Um, I just try to avoid it unless you really, really need that strain. And then, uh, even then, dip it, uh, spray it, whatever you got to do, and keep it quarantined for a week or two and just make sure nothing pops up on it. Look, look every day, twice a day. Uh, but if you can avoid it, just don't do it. Yeah, because it... Yeah. 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 The bottom line, guys, is, is no matter what you do, you're, you're repeating the same crop in the same place time and time again. So the first time out, you're clean. You've got to put protocols in. So you got to have a cleaning protocol. you got to have a preventative spray program. you got to have a reaction program. Okay? There's no ways around it. I don't care what size grower you are, how big you are, it's coming. It's sad to say it's job security for me, but you're not going to get away from it. So it's uh, regardless of where the plants come from, nature is nature. It's going to get in. Um, this is like a key part question about spider mites. Um, once people see spider mites, what's your best advice for that? My best advice is. If you can afford it, cut it all down. As soon as you see one spider mite, cut it all down if you can. Just get rid of it. Completely clean your room. Completely clean the outside of your room. I mean, I'm talking around the outside of your house or wherever it is. Uh, everything. And then cut it down because the spider mites, they're, uh, they're, if there's a big population, they're normal. Uh, they, they reproduce normally. They need a male and a female. But if there's only one, and he's a male, he will become asexual, and they will reproduce. You need literally one mite, and he can hide anywhere, uh, and then it'll just keep happening. So if you find a problem, most likely you're preventative from now. So uh, you can just kill it. Yeah, the, the higher the temperature uh, in, your, in your grow, the faster they'll produce, um, you know, something like 68 degrees, which is not a typical element uh, for your plant, but It'll, it'll, it'll take uh, twice as long for them to grow. So you got to know all your numbers and, and regulations. I, I actually disagree with them on spider mites. From our background, it's one of the easiest things to explain. Uh, we could sell you a uh, 
which is called Persimilis of the Two Spotted Spider Mite. It, 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 it's a very ferocious creature. It eats two spider mite, lays an egg for a new generation to hatch. Literally, we can clean heavily infested areas less than a week and a half. So I would not go to the mite. Okay? If it's another type of mite, you can go in there with the Andersoni or something else and clean it on the front side. Yeah, you might have to take off the web, but now I've done situations where it's full of web, but we can clean it and need the best of it. So, from my standpoint, it's not as big as it can. Everybody fears, that's the number one question I get. They fear spider mites. Now, if you want a quick trick, take a bean, string bean plant, okay? Plant it as a trap plant inside the room. Spider mite will always go to a bean leaf before it goes to any other plant. It loves the surface. When you see a yellow spot form on the bean leaf, flip it over, and you'll have a mite on the leaf. That knows you need to treat the crop even before you see any damage. What are the, what are the signs of spider manifestation? What are the first signs you know that you have a spider manifestation? Um, you'll see discoloring on the leaves on the top side. Flip that leaf over, and you're going to see a room full of bugs, and it's way too late. Invest in a microscope, invest in a magnifying glass, and scan your plants every day, a couple times a day if you're able to. Um, you know, like he said, once you see one, there's tons, and that's, that's a bad thing. The big thing is that uh, eggs, too, they're uh, really hard to see. Um, and that's like eight days, I think it's eight days. Eight days. Um, yeah, so every week or so, you're going to be getting a whole new population. Uh, the eggs are really hard to see, even under a microscope, because they're clear, uh, but they're there. <laughs> Good. Uh, the the two-spotted spider mites is easy to see. Uh, if you have russet mites or even cyclamen mites, they only just they, they form the plant tissue. It's Unless you have a very high-powered microscope, it's very hard to see. So, you really, at, at this point, you have to identify your mite, because this industry has because of the plants being in the ground for so long, they're heavily contaminated with lots of Yeah, I got a question for you about it. We have a lot of people, it's an old school thing, but now it's like become more popular people use ladybugs to treat spider mites. Yeah, if you go into a grocery store, the first thing you're going to say about spider mites is they're going to hand you a bucket full of ladybugs. Uh, first of all, the ladybugs they're handing you are not even going to eat your spider mites. Uh, the ladybugs you get over here are Japanese ladybugs, and you want the ones that have the heads on them. Even though they say those are the ones you want, it's really the larvae that are going to eat your spider mites. So uh, that's the miss of ladybugs. Yeah, the other thing with ladybugs is the ladybug lands on the Ladybugs are actually, if you're going to pick something for aphids, ladybug lands on the leaf surface. If it doesn't find a prey, it flies away. Okay, most of your ladybugs today are harvested when they go dormant. So guys go into caves and valleys and vacuum them up and vacuum cleaners and they throw them in the freezer to call them the farm and them. So that's what the ladybugs do. It's not not your sure answer. It's just a feel good product. They get stuck everywhere too, and your fans and your lights and they just die and you feel horrible and they get nothing. So. Maybe I'm using a little bit so you've got a whole day see now and now. I yeah no you you want to clean everything try to get as new as you can filters clean your filters that's what's going to be on the AC um, you know use your H2O2 clean your walls um, that's hydrogen hydroxide to rub in alcohol use gloves clean your equipment um, the biggest thing to uh, the biggest thing to avoid any pest is prevention. So get some organic sprays, spray dirt and veg, alternate sprays. Um, if it's pests, they'll 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 grow and they'll they'll hatch eggs. It takes you know so many days for different pests to grow again. So if you're not multiplying the, the usage of your sprays, they're gonna you're gonna have another infestation. Um, pretty much covered a lot of stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to what he just said. There's, there's certain type of cleaning solutions out there, okay? Chlorine, a lot of people think bleach is the best product, and it's not. Okay? 
and it only, it's only a surface pain. Okay, there's better ones. Um, Cinidate, Oxidate, Xerotol, Stripping. Um, these are cleaners that are contact kill. They kill all the way through, that will kill the pathogens. These are better choices. You know, higher quality peroxides, platomoniums that do a better cleaning job than what you're talking about. So, you really got to look at the products you use when you come out with cleaning. Yes, sanitation is key, but just normal household bleach and stuff will not do the job. Very good. Um, if you guys have any questions for us at this point, dogs or anything. Yeah, any Hey guys, how you doing? I have a question regarding prevention of infestations. I've read about using diatomaceous earth in your soil, and that will kill the insects. Have you guys had any? But yeah, that'll keep that? them from you know reharvesting and going back into the soil. And we can just sprinkle it on top of the soil, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like a nice layer on top of soil. Yeah. So it will work. That will help. So okay. you don't go back and lay.